This is the ESOcast, cutting-edge science and life behind the scenes of ESO, the European Southern Observatory. Exploring the ultimate frontier with our host, Dr. J, a.k.a. Dr. Joe Liske. Hello and welcome to this special episode of the ESOcast. Leading up to ESO's 50th anniversary in October 2012, we will showcase eight special features portraying ESO's first 50 years of exploring the southern sky. Stéphane Guizard loves the stars. No wonder he loves northern Chile too. Here, the view of the universe is amongst the best in the world. And no wonder he loves the European Southern Observatory, Europe's eye on the sky. Stéphane is a prize-winning French photographer and author. He is also one of ESO's photo ambassadors. In breathtaking pictures, he captures the solitude of the Atacama Desert, the high-tech perfection of giant telescopes, and the magnificence of the night sky. Like his fellow photo ambassadors from all over the world, Stefan helps in spreading ESO's message. A message of curiosity, wonder, and inspiration, proclaimed through cooperation and outreach. Cooperation has always been the basis of ESO's success. Fifty years ago, the European Southern Observatory started out with five founding member states. Belgium, France, Germany, the Netherlands and Sweden. Soon, other European countries followed. Denmark in 1967, Italy and Switzerland in 1982, Portugal in 2001 and the United Kingdom in 2002. Over the past decade, Finland, Spain, the Czech Republic and Austria also joined Europe's largest astronomy organization. Most recently, Brazil became ESO's 15th member state and the first non-European country to join. Who knows what the future will bring? Together, the member states enable the best possible astronomical science at the world's largest observatories. It's good for their economies too. ESO closely cooperates with industry in both Europe and Chile. Access roads had to be constructed. Mountain tops had to be leveled. The Italian industrial consortium, AES, built the main structure of the four VLT telescopes. Each telescope weighs in at some 430 tons. They also constructed the giant enclosures, each as high as a 10-story building. The German glass company Schott produced the delicate VLT mirrors, over 8 meters wide and just 20 centimeters thick. At Riosk in France, the mirrors were polished to a precision of a millionth of a millimeter before they made the long journey to Paranal. Meanwhile, universities and research institutes across Europe developed sensitive cameras and spectrometers. ESO's telescopes are built with taxpayers' money, your money, and so you can take part in the excitement. For example, ESO's website is a rich source of astronomical information, including thousands of beautiful pictures and videos. Also, ESO produces magazines, press releases and video documentaries, such as the one you're watching right now. And throughout the world, the European Southern Observatory contributes to exhibitions and science fairs.
countless ways to participate in the discovery of the cosmos. Did you know that the names of the four VLT telescopes were thought up by a young Chilean girl? 17-year-old Jose Albanes Castilla suggested the names Antu, Kuyen, Melipal and Yipun, meaning Sun, Moon, Southern Cross and Venus in the Mapuche language. Involving school children and students like Horsi is important. That's where ESO's educational activities come in, like student exercises and school lectures. When the planet Venus passed in front of the Sun in 2004, a special program was aimed at European students and teachers. And in 2009, during the International Year of Astronomy, ESO reached millions of school children and students all over the world. After all, today's children are tomorrow's astronomers. But in terms of outreach, nothing beats the universe itself. Astronomy is a visual science. Images of galaxies, star clusters and stellar nurseries fire our imagination. When not doing science, ESO's telescopes are sometimes used for the Cosmic Gems program, taking pictures just for the purpose of education and public outreach. After all, a picture is worth a thousand words. The general public can even take part in creating these staggering images through the Hidden Treasures competitions. Russian astronomy enthusiast Igor Chekalin won the competition in 2010. His marvellous images are based on real science data. Member States, industry and universities. By cooperating on all possible levels, ESO has become one of the most successful astronomy organizations in the world. And through its engagement with the public, you are invited to join the adventure. The universe is yours to discover. This is Dr. J, signing off from this special episode of the ESOcast. Join me again next time for another cosmic adventure.